I have a lot of respect for the atheists generally because they've generally thought a lot more about the mm. situation and, and struggled mm. with it more than the complacent fundamentalists, you know, who wallpaper over their doubts with, with, with overstatements about their beliefs. It's overwhelming. I don't usually think about these things, but I was, I was after my talk last night, and so all these people line up, and you know, they have their 15, 15 seconds with me, and they're kind of tentative. They're excited and attentive when they come up to talk to me, and then they have you know, 15 seconds of time to tell me something. I'm really listening to them, and they're hesitant about whether or not to share the good news about their life. You know? And I think it's often because when people share good news about their life, people don't necessarily respond positively. You know, they don't get encouragement. And people need so little encouragement. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. And so mm. they'll tell me something good, and I'll mm. think, oh, that's so good. You know, somebody mm. says, oh, I'm getting along way better with my father. I hadn't seen him for 10 years, and now we get along. It's like, mm. God, mm. great. Yeah. And then the, the power of that, you can't overstate the power of that for individuals to get their life together. The individual is mm. an unbelievably powerful force, and every single person who gets their act together a little bit, has the capacity to spread that around them. Mm. It's, it's a chain reaction, and so it's a lovely thing to see. And That's fantastic. My observation of atheists would be they don't live like atheists. They don't mm. live as though they really believe. Mm. They're just a cosmic accident and there's no purpose. Well, they turn, most of them, the best of them, I have a lot of respect for the atheists generally because They've generally thought a lot more about the mm. situation and, and struggled mm. with it more than the complacent fundamentalists, you know, who wallpaper over their doubts with, with, with overstatements about their belief. The atheists, mm. you know, the word Isaac means, or Israel, the word Israel means he who struggles with God. It's like, well, it's not obvious that it's not the atheists, you know, they're struggling mm. away. It's like they're obsessed with it even. And so they have God more on their mind than the typical person who's a believer. And so it, it, it's interesting too because there's been this little community developed around my biblical lectures in particular of people who call themselves Christian atheists, which I think is quite remarkable. So mm. if I lay out the rationale for the Christian ethic, which is something like pick up your damn cross and struggle uphill, which is a really good message, they think, oh yeah, well that makes a lot of sense. It's like, mm. well, I don't need the metaphysical baggage. Mm. It's like, well, maybe you do and maybe you don't, but even to pick up the, 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 the practical utility of that idea, which is overwhelming, that's, a, that's an excellent mm. start. So. And I was going to follow on that though, and say, it strikes me with a lot of young people, and I think this is enormously to their credit and goes to the heart, I think, of what you're saying. They're told that all morality is relative. They don't live that way. Mm. They're actually no. looking for truth, aren't they? Well, if you live that way, everyone hates you. You know, but that's the creed that... Oh, yes, yes. But that's a good example of how you, who you are can be out of sync of, with how you represent yourself. It's like I was, walking through the, with, I was walking through these ideas with the audience last night. It's like, well, how do we treat each other when things work? You know, and how do you treat yourself? Well, first of all, you have to treat yourself like you matter. Because if you don't, then you don't take care of yourself and you become vengeful and, and, and cruel. And you, you, take, you take it out on people around you, and you're not a positive force. None of that's good. So you suffer more, and so does everyone around you. And there's a malevolence that enters into it. None of that's good. So that's what happens if you don't treat yourself like you matter. And then, well, what happens if you don't treat other people like they matter? Well, you lie to them, you cheat them, you steal, you, you, you enter into impulsive relationships with them. They can't trust you. That doesn't go anywhere. They don't like you. You, you end up alone at best and maybe like in, in, incarcerated at worst. Like that doesn't work. And so you watch the people around you who thrive, regardless of what they say. They act out the proposition that everyone matters. And then you have a functional society. And I think, okay, well, if, if, if when you act out the proposition that everyone matters, you have a functional society, maybe that's evidence that that proposition is true. It's like, I think it's, I think it's true. I think the idea that the individual has a spark of divinity within him or her, I think there isn't a more true way of saying that. And if you act that out, well, this is, goes back to the idea that you brought up about potential, which is also something I've discussed with my audiences a lot. It's like, we don't act like we live in a material reality. We act like we face a landscape of potential 
an external landscape of potential, with an internal reservoir of potential. That's how we act. And then we call each other out on it. We say things like, well, you're not living up to your potential. And the person goes, oh yeah, well, I know. It's like, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Well, you mean there's more to you than meets the eye. Even though it's not measurable, right? It's yeah. not tangible. It's just possibility. But everyone acts as, that, as though that's a reality. Mm. And we all, act as if, we all act as if we make choices about what reality to bring into being. We, 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 we punish ourselves for our moral errors and, and other people as well. We act out this, this ethic that puts us each at the center of being as active participants in the world that we want to bring forward. Everyone acts that way. And if we don't, then things go to hell instantly. So it's like, well, what do we believe? This is the argument I've had with people like Sam Harris, the atheist types. It's like, yeah, you think you're atheist, man. It's like you're Christian, Judeo-Christian, let's say, to the core. You just don't understand it. You just don't realize it. And it's understandable, but it's not helpful.